Hello, I am John Madsen and this is Building a Web Crawler, Episode 5. In this episode, we'll be adding a hasher class to our business objects. We'll be using SHA-256 hashing algorithm to create a unique hash that we'll use as a unique identifier for our domain and anchor URLs. You should be familiar with a key value pair data structure where the key is used as an identifier or index and the value is the value of the item you'll actually need. If you compare this to how an index column in a relational database works, it will start to make sense. Since we are building this crawling system to work with billions of domains and anchors, we'll need an efficient way to know if a domain or anchor already exists in order to prevent duplicates. Trying to match a variable length string requires much more processing than a regular data structure in Java. In a database, as an indexed column, it is even less efficient. Relational database indexes work best if they are fixed length, in the case of a fixed width character sequence, or as a short sequence of numbers like int, long, or big int. V04. Knowing this, it makes sense to use a fixed character hash value of the URL as a primary key. If you don't believe this, do, a realistic, do some realistic testing with a couple billion URLs if you can, before you dismiss this approach. Hashing URLs means that you can always predict the index value of a URL, which comes into play when you need to convert URLs to hashes on the fly to look up metadata. Add a new class called Hasher. Create a public static method called 2SHA256, which will return a string and accept the string as an argument. Add an import for the Java Security Message Digest namespace. Add a try catch block for our exception handling. We'll catch all exception types for now. In the case an exception is thrown, we'll return the exception to string for now. We know the most common way to cause an exception for this method would be to pass in an empty string. We'll want to handle this case specifically later. Now we'll put in the algorithm to create the SHA-256 hash. We'll take the string that is accepted as a perimeter to the method when it is invoked and hash it. Once we create the byte array that contains the hash, we'll want to process it further to make sure it is a fixed length of 64 characters and construct a string that the method return type requires. Since a string object is immutable, we'll be appending and building out a string in multiple steps. We'll use the type string builder, which is mutable or modifiable. Use an enhanced for loop to iterate through each byte in our array named hash. We use an enhanced for loop instead of a traditional for each loop since we will not be modifying the array. Since the code in this method can throw exceptions, we'll append the throws exception keyword to the method signature. In this episode, we created a class named Hasher, which creates a SHA-256 hash of a string value that we pass into the method. In the next episode, we'll refactor our code to implement the new hash method to create a domain hash and anchor hash for the domain and anchor classes and update our unit test to do the same.